let's uh, start off radically. Let's bow our hearts for a word of prayer. Well, Father, we thank you once again that we can gather together in peace and safety to open your word to us. And we pray that you would open your word to our hearts and lives. And we thank you for this evening, and we thank you for your word, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We invite into our lives that we might grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, and that we might be more responsive to your will in our lives as we commit ourselves into your hands without any reservation. In the name of Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, we are in session seven of our study of the book of Revelation, and the first six verses of chapter three involve the letter to the church at Sardis. And let me mention this right now, that of the book of Revelation, as you will quickly uh, understand, I regard chapters two and three as the most essential part for you and me as uh, professing Christians. Uh, because they're the seven letters, seven. Jesus Christ wrote seven epistles, and they are in chapters two and three of the book of Revelation. But strangely enough, as we study those seven letters, it's going to emerge, I think, that the most provocative, the most impacting of these seven letters, at least in one way of reckoning them, is the letter to Sardis, the most impacting one to you and me. So let's take a look at this. Just by way of warm-up and review and for visitors, we're in the book of the Revelation. Notice that's singular. The word means the unveiling. The apocalypsis is the unveiling It's the consumma- of Jesus Christ. It's the consummation of all things. It's the only book of the Bible that has the audacity to promise a special blessing to the reader. Other books say, read the Word of God in a collective sense, but only one book emerges to say, read me, I'm special. There are 404 verses of the book which conclude over 800 allusions from the Old Testament. And they'll actually be uh, listed in the notes that will accompany the study. And, of course, it presents the climax of God's plan for man. And when I say it that way, it sounds a little academic, so let me say that God's plan for you and me is climaxed in this book. And that's one of the reasons, one of many reasons, it's such a special blessing. And let's keep in mind to whom the book was given. This comes as a, as a surprise to many who haven't paid attention to the first sentence. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Unto whom? Jesus Christ, right on. Why? To show unto his servants things which must suddenly come to pass, shortly or suddenly. 